Our one-on-one -on -one chat today is with a prominent Nigerian politician and a chieftain of the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC. A graduate of the University of Port Harcourt, he holds one of the highest national titles in Nigeria, Commander of the Order of the Niger CON. Our guest is a former governor of River State and the current Minister of Transportation. He's quoted as saying during his ministerial screening at the Senate that he has never collected a bribe in his life. His name is Chibuike Rotimi Amechi. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. You're welcome. First question. Is it true or one of fluke when you said you've never collected a bribe in your life? Well, you've never seen a Nigerian politician who has never collected a bribe. I was actually shocked. Why? <coughs> well, you think that all Nigerian politicians collect a bribe? Uh, well, at least 95%. They can't be among the five percent. <laughs> <laughs> so that is actually true. I, I just when I saw it, I was like, "Is this really um, an aberration, or maybe a, a mistake? Something you just said out of the tension of the moment to ensure that you got screened true?" Well, what does that, what, what does taking bribe go have to do with my screening? It just, I was just trying to explain that they then got the current governor of Rivers State was trying to tarnish my reputation, and that if they if they made contact with all those who worked with me, not just my colleagues in the cabinet or colleagues, colleagues in government, but contractors, who are the first state in Nigeria to establish a public procurement process by law. And when I was winning, people were screaming. World Bank supported me, but I did it. Transferring the authority to award contract from the office of the governor to the office of the public procurement department. And not too many people have done it up to today. See, governors still award contract from their office. Okay, let's come to more recent events. Uh, the Easter message you um, sent you. Yeah, I, I know it seems um, um, an absurd position to start this conversation, but it is essential because you acknowledge that there were some things not quite right with Rivers State. Um, but you, in that uh, message, you basically said that Rivers State has garnered you know, an unsavory reputation in recent uh, times. And you said the leaders, including yourself, should ask God for forgiveness. Have you asked God for forgiveness? And what really is your in, scene? In River State now, literally up to 8% are beheaded almost every, almost every day. Beheaded, when I say beheaded, I beheaded. And you ask yourself the question, you were once the governor of the state. It may not have left it as bad as it is now, because at the time we were there, we were not number one in terms of unemployment in the country. But now we're number one, but not by any other as, as assessment, but by MBS, Nigeria Brief for Statistics. And then you ask yourself the question, how did we get this bad? How did we get this bad? And, and we're not the only state in the country. We have oil, we get, we get money from uh, the derivation funds. So uh, people, if they're not the richest, they should be among the few uh, states that can afford to put food on the table of uh, their people. Now you have a state where people are uh, in droves departing, running away from the state. Business is no longer flying. Now it's come to a civil service state. Before you have to have, you, have, you used to have the oil industry. The oil industry has moved to Lagos. When we were there, they were returning. As soon as we left, they all packed away. LNG is regretting being there. I had to come. I, 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 I convinced Elenji to come because we were arrested the security, security situation, and we did arrest the security situation. But now it's gone too bad. All you have is propaganda. So what's the way forward? The way forward is that the governor should be responsible. I was the governor of the state. So how can you work with him? We know before now that there, there seemed to be a frosty kind of relationship between the first two he, of you. First he has to accept that he wants to be a governor. He doesn't want to be a governor. He, he said that he's governed like a chairman of council. But he is the governor of the state. That's and the between... question actually is, sir, uh, how, since you're both concerned about the welfare of the state, how is it possible that you work together to ensure that the narrative that, that, changes? That's why I said he has to first accept that he wants to be the governor of the state. He's not yet the governor of the state. There's a difference between being a governor and being the governor of the state. I used to what the governor of the state. You have to look at it. You see, when I was a governor, maybe he needs to. He was my chief of staff. He should know how I handled the state. I didn't sleep. The first thing I thought was, what do I do to create employment? As a governor of the state, you have to think for the state. You have to give a direction. As, when I was governor, I knew that the problem was, look, if you fight these criminals without creating an alternative economy, they will continue to create for themselves an illegal economy. So, and I tell the state, if we don't, as a state, create a legal economy, the criminals will create for themselves an illegal criminal economy. So what did we do? We built primary schools. We built secondary schools. 
we commence construction of roads, both rural and urban. We commence construction of power. By the time we left, we had 715 megawatts of power. Still, they are not being used. In fact, all, some of them have been shut down because we, the, the, uh, we sold it to Sahara. All this is we are done to create employment. We established a banana, a banana farm with a Mexican company. It's all, all been destroyed. We established uh, this uh, uh, farm, what do you call it? Uh, they have a branch in uh, Benin Republic, uh, Songhai Farms. <laughs> All that we did because we wanted to create employment, to create an opportunity for rivers people to come out of crime and get employed. Now they have all been destroyed. So where, where will the people be employed? Doesn't That's why he has to first accept that he wants to be the governor and stop being a radio and newspaper governor. So it seems that the impediment from what you've said to the development of the people is politics, basically, and an unsettled environment. So how can you, <coughs> as a leader, you know, somebody that has been at the helm of affairs for years, work to ensure, I mean, this is somebody that, you know, you had a relationship with, and he's your brother, so to speak. But the most important thing is not about politics. Now, I'm talking about the people of River State. Is it not possible? despite all these challenges. Yeah, I don't think you're getting it right. There's what is called the instrument of authority. You yes. can't take away the instrument of authority from me in Minister of Transportation. Certainly. So you can't tell the man on the street, how do we build railways? What, who do, what, what authority does he have to build railways? I'm the person who would have to develop a memo to the president and say to the president, this is what we want to do about railways. No matter how well-intentioned in Nigeria is, he can't come into the railway industry except the president authorizes him. And for the president to authorize him, it is because the president has the instrument, the art instrument of authority. I don't have it anymore in River State. When I had it, I, I, I made my own contributions. When we built primary schools, we built those primary schools not just to admit the children alone, but to create a conducive atmosphere for education to, to thrive. And people were moving their children from private institutions to public institutions for the first time in a very long while. But not only that, it was also an avenue to create employment. So people were now employed to help build those schools. And there were many, the same 150 to, to 200 uh, health centers. All that we are doing to create employment. Roads, over 500 persons were employed for one road we were constructing. And we see, our man began to say, okay, by the time they complete the construction of these primary schools, the secondary schools, the health centers, and the roads, where will this people work? So we began farming. If you don't have an attention to crime, be, the, the, the crime will thrive. Well, crime is not actually peculiar to River State. Let's no, but it's worse. But the situation in other parts of the country, as it stands currently, we have um, a, a spike in kidnappings. We know that the uh, Kaduna uh, Abuja uh, Highway uh, is almost like a trap right no, now. No, no, no. no. I drove, I drove through that place two, three nights ago. And there was no... Two half midnight, I was on that road. Two half midnight. I wanted to test out that road. But there's been a whole lot of I'm concern not kidnapping. about, you I'm, know, kidnapping oh, yeah. and banditry I'm not saying, I'm not saying the country. There. So I'm actually, the question I'm actually trying to ask you is, this is the reality. It's insecurity, or mostly around parts of this country, and people are expressing concern. They're accusing government of inaction or inadequate action to address security uh, situations in this country. What is your reaction to that? The reaction is simple. The governors have to take charge. Don't forget, I see, I talk as a former governor. When I came into Port Harcourt, there was curfew. People were raising their hands up to be able to walk on the streets. But I knew that there's no way I can develop River State without first addressing the issue of insecurity. And the issue of insecurity is a matter of poverty. So if you want to address insecurity, you must first and foremost address poverty. When you see people kidnap, it's not because they want to kidnap. When you see people uh, uh, robbing, it's not because they want to rob. It's because they don't have a future, and therefore they're willing to take that risk. So if I were still to be a governor, the first thing I would address to curb insecurity is to address the issue of poverty. I told you, I gave you an example. That's why when you asked this question, I said, if you listen to me in the past, I just told you that the first thing I looked at is that if you provide physical policy without providing social policy, you will not curb insecurity. So to curb insecurity, while we, while we reinforce the police and the army in the state, we also reinforce employment opportunities. So we created the schools, the health centers, the roads, the farms, the industries. I hear that the syringe factory that will put so much money in is being, is being vandalized. We have a new batch of governors coming in, sir. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, what, um, be, 
in your position as a former governor who has seen some of these things firsthand, how do you think they can, you know, first off, there is a new minimum wage to contend with now. On top of that, they have all other things to do. How would you advise them to go about tackling this situation? I think, it's, I think, I think this interview will, will serve the country best if you focus on the Minister of Transportation than the former Governor of River State. Because, you see, I, I, I tell people, I say, give the governors the opportunity to start their tenure. History will judge everybody now. History will start to judge everybody. But if you continue to say, oh, when you were there, what did you do and what didn't you do? What is week? What is, what is the government week doing? And what is, it's business. Actually, it's business. You know, when I introduced free education and free health care, the first question everybody asked me was, how are you going to sustain this? And I said, I don't give a damn. I'll do it for eight years. If the next governor comes, I don't sustain this. It's business. And I did it for eight years. I provided not just free education. I provided the environment by which free education would thrive. I paid salaries. I made sure that for every child that attended any of our schools, we paid his school fees in the school. You see the difference between the kind of free education we provided and the kind of free education you met under the military. Under the military was a mouth thing. They would just say, oh, we have declared free education. So you go to school, there are no chocks, you go, there, are no, there is no water, there is no light. In every primary school we built, there was power. There was computer. There was water. And there was a contractor from that village whose responsibility it is to clean the school 24 hours. So, let's focus on Mr. Transportation and forget, and forget uh, uh, governance uh, as it pertains to states. I can't, honestly can't uh, assess a governor until he completes his term. Before we move on from that, still a little bit on politics now. Um, there was a recent news um, that the River State governor, government rather, has vowed to jail two former commissioners who served under you if they failed to return the sum of 34.5 billion naira budgeted for the integrated medical industries, IME and syringes. I think so. I said uh, they are accused of embezzlement. You know, the, the funniest part is that the governor is, may be serious about it. If you look at the law, he will not succeed. But because the court in River State is part of the executive, there is no court in River State. There is no judiciary. He will send it to Justice Chiwendo. And Justice Chiwendo will just <laughs> give you judgment as he likes. And then they will start bribing. The problem with River State government is the amount of money they give out. So once he starts bribing, then the two commissioners are in trouble. But if it is the law, he's going nowhere. Uh, are you saying these men did not commit the crime? They, how can they, they commit the crime under me? It was 34 billion. The man is just. Please take me out of this reverse government question. Because the man is just. Well, he pays the press, he does everything, just makes propaganda. But one thing he doesn't learn is that we had the period when the when reverse government was on the pages of Mr. Pebidi. By the time that government, the tenure of that government passed, everybody discovered it was a fluke. You, you, you know, sometimes I, I know you have a, some concerns about what's going on in River State and you would rather not really talk too much about it. But what you're saying now basically is like indicting the um, judiciary in River State of course. that of course. they are complicit somehow. Of course, of course. I met a lawyer who somebody hired to file a case against the state government. He said he would not. He had that files in Lagos State. I said, why? He said he would never win a case in the river state under the government, that he would bribe everybody. So does this apply <coughs> only to political cases or, or just any, any matter that involves the river state government or the river state governor? Any matter or any matter he's interested in. Wow. All right, let's go to some other questions. Let's look beyond this for a bit and talk about your relationship with the senator. Got to like Babio. It was in the news that oh. there was a truce. Can you, can you leave politics alone? No, no, we is cannot. It, is it, is that's why you know people have been fighting to get me to this. To, yes. to, and I've been avoiding it. Because I know that it, all Nigerians are waiting for me to say something. I have no, been, but no, 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 seriously. For two years, I've been the, avoiding the, to say something. No, okay, the truth of the matter is, it is in the news. And the, the thing is, people were taken aback to hear that story right. and that there was even exactly that's between that, you that and is, Akbar that is the so, and that's the more reason why you should react. No, there's no need to react. When we are called for, to have this meeting, the first one I asked my friend Goswit, are we quarreling? And if I'm going to be honest, he challenged me that I played a role to uh, his uh, uh, failure in the last election. I said, how? He accused me of being a friend to the INEC uh, commissioner. I said, yes. 
<laughs> for Christ's sake, Mike is my friend. Mike canceled the election in River State. He was asked to come and supervise the election in River State in 2018. And he canceled it. And he's my friend. If he's my friend, he should have declared because we were winning. APC won that election. He refused. His excuse is that it was, there was violence. I said, Mike is uncontrollable. I've told everybody who knows Mike. You know, somebody that can pick up my phone and say, Hi, Mike, again, how are you? Please ensure that uh, Bobby wins. <laughs> Cannot. Rubbish. Mike will not accept that. Mike will cancel that election that concerns me, and tomorrow will call me on the phone as if there was nothing that happened. So that's the person he is. There's no way I could have had any control of any election in any part of the country. Absolutely not, impossible, not possible. So the only thing you can tell about Mike is that he will not take bribe. So, so I wish they posted back to River State. Then the, the bribe I next took from Wiki would not have been possible because Mike would have refused. He would neither talk to me nor talk to Wiki. So that he can be sure of. So you, everything is now like good. So with, you, uh, Abby. Abby. Well, we're friends. Mike, uh, my baby and I have been friends for long. You see, that's, I don't know whether you call it what, what I suspected it would be at the time we were governor. It's mere pair, pair rivalry. Uh, who was a better governor? Maybe people believe he was a better governor. Maybe he was. Maybe my people thought I was a better governor. Maybe I was. <laughs> you can't tell. But those are not things you bother about. So going forward, what kind of relationship should Oof. we expect to see? As in, Tell me. will there be any political outcome to this truce, so to speak? Uh, was, first, uh, was there any crisis? It's siblings. So they have. Don't, I talk to my children a lot. So you hear my second son will say, "Oh, you give all the attention to Chikamba because he's the first son and because he studied medicine." And then you hear Chikamba tell me, "Dad, every time it's about Obina Obina because he's far away in, in Canada." I say, I say, "What's your problem? Focus on your own issues." But those are what you call sibling rivalry, isn't it? That's what you have. You have between myself and uh, Ababu. So there was not actually a problem. It was just me. Uh, we expect it to happen in politics. All right. To quote a recent publication assessing your performance as Minister of Transportation, um, I will quote this, open quote, he talks a good game, plays bitter politics, and give as good as he gets in the country's cutthroat public space, end of quote. Who's in a very that? next sentence, the person says, open quote, Amechi, it has to be said, has done well, end of quote. There seem to be this, you know, kind of love-hate relationship between you and the media um, across the board. That's the, um, uh, you know, the sense that one gets. So what's which it, media? Which media now? Across board, Nigeria. Uh, who? Which? You want me to start calling these people? No, don't call. You know, what, what, so, okay, what, what, let me just what, ask what, the question. Me? The question I'm picking out of this quote, sir, is. What is your assessment of your time? Do you think that you've done well? Because this person, in one breath, is you know using very strong terms to describe you, and in the very next breath, says he has done well. What is your assessment? I don't know. <laughs> I also don't know. You see, I have a habit or a character most people. Uh, I have two types of character most people don't like. The first is I speak my mind. I don't care what you think. I will speak my mind, it is of tension in me and I sleep well. The second is I don't give a damn about what you think about me. Once I'm convinced that on this thing I'm doing, God is with me, I don't give a damn. I don't. You can write as much as you want to write, you can say as much as you want to say. I just, once I call my children and they're satisfied, because my wife will always be with me, but my children are not there. Once I call them and say, hi boy, hi, how are you doing? He said, Dad, I'm good. Have you seen the following? He said, are you convinced that I'm not there? Yeah. Fine. <laughs> you can do whatever you like. You can see whatever you like. I, I, imagine where a government, if, not, if you were me, people like you would have collapsed. You have a situation where you have a gang of eh? a session of the press who have been paid, a session of the judiciary who have been paid, even a session of the international community who wanted us out of government, wanted Buhari out of government, all plus the River State government funding 90% of this. And I'm still surviving. It's not a, a cat with nine lives, it's a cat with 15 lives. 
<laughs> okay. And th th there was actually a, a reason for that question. What and it basically is... If I'm a good... If, you, if, I'm, if I think I performed. Yeah, if you, I if you think that it. you're coming back I, I, I'm for the a second I'm, I'm not the president. It's a decision to make. You know, when the pressman accosted me at one of the sites when we were inspecting the project and said, who? I hope the president doesn't change you. I hope he brings you back because the kind of passion you have. I you know what I told them. I said it was the same passion I deployed in River State that after I left government, okay, came in, he did nothing. And the same press said, yes, he did nothing. The same press that were coming to see, okay, take the Pupu, and then the Pupu Road. I took the bridge up to Pupu Town. We could then lay the asphalt. I said, oh, I've completed this road. And the Pupu people with press said he did it. Meanwhile, I took the same press to see that out of the 12 bridges, only one bridge was, was left. And the bridge that was left was between Ikuru Town and the next town. Right? So, you see, in Nigeria, if you are a good politician, you just don't bother. Just do what to your mind you are convinced is the right thing for the public good. Because the same public in Nigeria who says, oh, yeah, he's a good man, he's a good public, I would say, crucify him, crucify him. Depends on how much you give to that very public that you are addressing. The innocent ones, the majority of them who are in the villages, understand. Go back to the university now. They will tell you, we want to go back to their mechi years. The, the poor people will tell you that. But then you could go to farm. Now you can't go to farm. So, so far, sir, you've talked about you know some of the things that you've been able to do, and you know some of this credit is taken away. It seems that it's the same situation we had with what Jonathan did. At some point, it was the same comment that he did not do much. What did he do now? So I can call what I did. So name what Jonathan did. <laughs> you, you in every local you government in my state, I will call projects. I will call. Her. There's no local government you won't see health centers. A minimum of between five and ten. There's no local government you won't see primary schools. In fact, we had even started what we call light the villages. It was about nine billion naira. I don't know why we didn't finish it. We had to take rural electrification to all every village in River State. We took roads to nearly eighty percent of eighty percent in River State. So that I can mention. You see, when we are running the election for the second term, we, for every village we mention one project and say challenge us. So let's let's take let's up, take up Jonathan for everybody. Let's see what he did in River State. Well, he's not here to defend himself. But exactly. the, 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 so, the reason I'm asking you is because you were you were in PDP at some point. I wasn't in PDP at the federal level. I wasn't in the federal government. I was PDP in River State. Yes, and he was the president at the national. There's some sort of loyalty between uh, the state bodies and the national. I was it's seen the same. I was That's what I'm saying. So you have ideas as to the things I can that tell you some of the things I think he some had of the done. Things he, some of the things he started which he couldn't complete. He started the Kaduna Abuja Rail, and I've said it. I even say what went as far as 80% completion, but he couldn't complete it. He borrowed $500 million at the time we were rich. He started some of these airports that we were about to commission it. He did. He borrowed another $500 million from the China Exim Bank to build those five airports, Port Harcourt, Abuja, Kano, and Lagos, which we were about to complete. But we were completing them. Because you, you can't have funding didn't come as at that time. We weren't frugally disciplined. Well, I mean, we're not disciplined. We're not frugal. <laughs> what else did he do that I can remember? These are the two major things I can remember as far as my ministry is concerned. What else did he do? What else did he do? But the roads were not fixed. It's not that the president is fixing the roads all over the country, and they run in trillions of naira. The power was a big challenge to him. But by the time we came, uh, we push power from 3,000 megawatts to 7,000 megawatts, for which we deploy about 5,000 megawatts. We have captive power now. If you go to the market, if you go to the investors, we're making sure that the investors have regular power supply. Right? Okay, even take, take, take maritime. Though it's up to now, it's still going on, but our waterways, you couldn't, you couldn't move. Now we've paid out $195 million to an Israeli firm, to take over the water by training our air, uh, Navy, naval personnel, NIMASA, Army, and then the SSS and the Air Force. All right, let's um, move to your work. Recently, that's you. Be, that's a better interview. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, um, you, on behalf of the federal government, inaugurated a 26 member board of the Nigerian Railway Corporation. And one of your charges to them was not to slow down work. What really are your concerns, and why was that charge necessary? You know, in the press, the pressmen are funny. That wasn't my main speech. That was on our side. 
I saw professors, doctors, former senators, former governors as members of the board, nominated by their governors. And I said, man, this board is heavy. Please don't slow us down. Because this, you have, there will be conflict of ideas. Former governors, former senators, professors, there will certainly be conflict of ideas. So I turned to the chairman, who is uh, almost like a prime minister in the Daura Kingdom in Katsina, and I said to him, look, just, this your board is too heavy. Don't slow us down. And what I mean, I don't slow us down. Is it, by the time they begin to argue with the management, then you have a problem. Okay. That's what, and it was on our side. It wasn't the main speech. Now they ignored the main speech and yeah, took that on their side. And took their side and say, oh, the minister charges. But, but, but that you're worried it might imply that they may indeed slow down the work that you have been doing. No, 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 uh, they with... can't. I'm, I'm the minister. <laughs> well, depends on who they, who they appoint in 2019. If I'm reappointed, you can't slow me down. I'm, the speed is too much for you to slow me down. I have targets I must, I must complete, and I must fulfill those targets, and they can't. Why would they slow me down? You've done quite a lot in three years. Uh, uh, a lot of persons will acknowledge that fact. And um... do, do you acknowledge that? <laughs> <laughs> um, to, us, to, to, to a large extent, you have done quite well on, I mean, in the past three years, and a lot of persons are optimistic that this will continue. So what's the bigger picture? Um, what if you don't come back as the minister? Continuation has always been a problem. Um, no, you don't have a choice. We, 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 the president is the same. He <laughs> was his idea. He said, look, I want to fix the railway. And so whoever becomes the minister for transport will fix the railway. Uh, the difference may be in terms of time and speed. Okay, uh, paraphrasing a Nobel laureate uh, who has also acknowledged that you've done so well. Oh, prof. Uh, yes. <laughs> 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 well, nobody, nobody will believe him. Yeah, that you've done well. A lot of persons seem to be, as much as you might have a lot of critics, there are some people who are solidly by your side. Yeah, please and help me. What are they criticizing me about? <laughs> Well, there is nothing you do that there won't be some ripple effect. That people will not say, okay, maybe you're not doing it right or the other. For instance, some might speculate how much so far have you spent in trying to revamp the railway system in Nigeria? Do you think you can get the figure? What I can t tell you off hand would be how much we spend to complete the Lagos Ibadan Railway. I need to get to the office and have the documents to look at. But Lagos Ibadan Railway for now is $1.6 billion contract. But I think about another $600 million on top uh, will be required for the ex uh, extra works that they're doing. Um, and uh, I don't think there's a variation. So if you say about nearly $2 billion or for the completion of the Lagos Ibadan, right? That's it, as far as railway is concerned. Not much has happened in terms of the new infrastructure for maritime. We focused on uh, the maritime academy, or on, that's where I'm coming from actually today. And in revamping that place, we will make sure they've applied their budget, not external funds. Uh, and we believe that if we get the next loan we've applied for, which is about 5.3 to 5.7 billion dollars, that will complete from Lake, from Ibadan to Kano. So we will have done a total of 1,500 kilometers of uh, standard gauge. Then you have the, the narrow gauge. I just had the last meeting with them last week, and I've told them that before the end of the cabinet, we would want to send in a memo to confirm the concession contract, and I'm waiting for them. So that's it. Okay. Um, so you see those who say we're borrowing, they don't know how much we borrow. They think when they hear that we need $8.7 billion to do the rail from Lagos to Kano, and they say, oh, they borrowed $8.7 billion. If not, why well, we borrow this one point six? How much of these funding came from China? Because there Out of is 1.6, I think we brought in $200 million. So they brought to 1.4. Now, good luck borrowed $500 million for $500 million for uh, Kaduna Abuja, and borrowed $500 million for the uh, uh, airport. But for us, what we've successfully borrowed so far is the $1.6 billion. But after the $1.6 billion, I think China, China is in back will be $1.4 billion. But there's always this worry when it comes to China, you know, about countries becoming indebted 
to them uh, they're not philanthropists what is what are they gaining we from have the capacity things? to pay back friendly relationship is one we have the capacity to pay back don't forget from the from the oil uh, if we manage our railway well, it will be part, part of uh, partial contribution to the con to the payment it's been a pleasure having you so far we'll take a short break and when we come back we'll continue the conversation do stay with us